back in the studio and I'm going to be working on some earrings um, that are actually uh, turquoise that is from the Marinci mine that I got and it's very nice turquoise so I'm super excited about it and I'm going to be using spoons these are sterling silver and these will be my backing pieces so as you can see these are sterling silver sterling right there marked labeled and then the designs aren't that great so i probably won't be using these for spoon rings um, but i will be cutting these ends off and hammering these down flat so i can use these as flat backings for my earrings and the stones i will be using are these awesome stones right here look at those aren't those fantastic so those are the stones I'm using for the earrings. So for now, we will cut these cut and cut with the Fordham. And the wonderful thing about having a Fordham with a reverse is that you can just throw it in reverse, get your little tool out. This is a mandrel here that has a little has a little screw end. And these cutting heads aren't that great. I got these at Harbor Freight. Um, but they, they do the job. And so in order to screw it back in, there we go. So instead of taking my time with the jeweler's saw, I am just going to cut these right about there. until they're ready to be worked off. And then again, right about there. And the spoons get hot when you're cutting on these, so don't, you know, hold on to it too close to where you're cutting, because they do get warm. So. Now we will take these over to the bench and flatten them out. So on my bench, I have a couple of different ways of flattening pieces out. I can take this um, guy off and then I have a big chunk of bar, big chunk of um, steel there at the bottom that I can hammer things on or I can hammer things on this piece. This piece here is totally flat. There's no rivets in it yet, so I got this at my uh, scrapyard. And I'm just gonna be taking my trusty, ah, there it is, my trusty hammer. And when you're hammering these, you wanna make sure that you don't have too many like pits or divots in the hammer. This one does. Let's see if I don't have another hammer that's flat. This one's maybe even worse. Wow. Well, I think I will use this hammer. And if I need to, I can go file this thing off flush. And actually, that's what I might do right now is take a file and file it flush. Um, and if that doesn't work, then I've got a grinder and I'll just grind it. So give me two seconds. I'll be right back. Much better. Still has a little pit right there, but I'm not going to worry about that. And I should have heated these and annealed them first. Which I will be doing here soon.
All right, because this piece here is much thicker than the rest of it, there's this weird kind of wrinkle that happened in the center of the spoon. So I'm gonna anneal both of these. And annealing just means heating them until they're red. And basically what that does is it takes, imagine this is the chemical bond in that silver, it relaxes it so that the silver will spread a little so that when I hammer it, it will flatten out a little bit better than what it is. Okay, to the soldering or annealing area, these are what I have my pieces set on. These are kiln shelves. This is a kiln shelf, this is a kiln shelf. Those are broken pieces of kiln shelves. So kiln shelving gives me a nice large space to work on. Um, you can get an annealing block, which is essentially a kiln shelf. It's a small piece. You can actually get these kiln shelves for pretty cheap at a local pottery supply store. Ask them for their used kiln shelves. And mine is set on a brick, which, here I'll lower this down so that way you can see the brick underneath. Set on a paver underneath. And that's all you need is just the, the paver underneath the kiln shelf. And then the kiln shelf itself will help keep heat from going down to your um, to your workspace. I'm using a propane torch. This is the torch that I use for everything. This is my grandfather's torch. And it's not quite heated up yet today, so it might need a few starts. And you can tell the silver, actually I'm gonna scroll in, just zoom in just a little bit so you can see what the silver does. It turns this kind of rainbow effect and then it turns almost a red and kind of a white. That's when you know it is annealed enough. Kind of this red and then almost the white. So I know that they are annealed enough. And I am dunking these in water so then that way I can hold them by hand. You can hear that's of the water. And then back to the bench to work them flat. Take this one first, just flatten them out. As you can see, I'm, I'm choked up on the hammer, so that way I know I am hitting this flat on. good. These are my flat backing pieces for my earrings. So let's take these to the other bench so that we can play with the stones and get the bezel wire set up. Okay, for bezel wire, I am not a fan of plain bezel wire, um, but I ran out of serrated bezel wire, so this is what I will be using. And this is how I do bezel wire. I'm sure a lot of other people do it differently. I'm just going to loosely walk it around the stone, get the basic shape. And then cut it. So that is for that stone. And then I am going to be cutting this. These are flush mount cutters. So I'll be cutting this a little bit larger than what I need to begin with because I will anneal these here in just a quick second. 
Okay, and then this stone. So I'm just gonna walk it around. This stone. And this bezel wire is way too tall for these these stones. Um, again, I'm running out of supplies, so I'm using what I have. Okay, so this is for this stone here. See how I cut a little too much off on that? So these I will be taking to a kneel. So kneeling the bezel wire, you just want to hit it with a little bit of heat. These are so thin that it is very easy to melt the bezel wire. So it's important that you just anneal them with a little bit of heat, dunk them in some water, and then you're good to go. It does not take that long. Okay, there's one. There's one. And there is the second one. Got a little bit of gunk on this one from my plate. A little bit of flux. Not too worried about it. So taking these back over to the stone areas. Okay, we have... There we go. Now what I'm going to do is just work it a little bit more because there's some pretty sharp edges on these stones. And what I'd like to do actually is get a really nice bend here because that's a really sharp edge on that stone right there. And here I'm going to bend that back just a little bit. So that I get this. Nice little 90 degree bend in it. Okay, I will say. That's pretty good. This bend here needs to be almost a 90 degree bend also. And again, I hate working with these flat bezel wires. Okay, that looks good. Okay. I want to make sure that the bezel wire sides line up before I start cutting anything. So again, just going to press around it and then I'm going to cut my extra little bit off. Now when I cut this off what I'm doing is I am resting my 
cutters on the end of the other one so that when that cuts that will line up perfectly just like so I think it's going to be a little too long I still think I need just a hair cut off I don't like the way that this is shaped. So I'm going to make more of a um, 90 degree bend there and do a 90 degree bend there. Let's see if that gives me the shape that I'm looking for. Yep, that is perfect. Okay, I'm going to cut that again. And again, resting my pliers on the edge that is cut. And let's see if this fits. Voila. Okay, that to me is a good fit. So when I fit mine, I do not solder these ends together. I've seen a lot of people do that on YouTube, and that's fine. You can solder the ends together. I just make sure that they fit along on the sides. And that is it. So that would be for that piece. So I solder this and I'm using the whole of the spoon area because I'm going to do a design on this. I don't know what my design is going to be yet, but I know that I want a design on it. And I know that if I cut this, if I really wanted to, I could use one spoon and do one stone here, one stone over here, and then we could have just plain earrings. But I do definitely want a design. So that is for that piece. Okay, and on this one I know already that I want to bend that out a little bit. I'm going to put this stone in here and walk it around. Now you'll notice once these have been annealed that they're much easier to bend. And I could be happy with this, but I know that I want the edges to be a little more crisp, so I'm going to put my pair of pliers there and just create a nice 90 degree bend. Do you see what I'm saying? Like about a 90 degree bend instead of it being a... Um, Instead of it being more of a rounded, like this, this is rounded, and then these are sharp bends. Okay. Make sure. And I really want more of a bend in that bottom corner too, so I'm going to take this. And I'm 
hopefully that bent it right along the in the area that I needed it to be bent and it did and there we go I like how that looks drop the stone out take my flush cutters and And yeah, keeping, having a little piece of that. So I'm just working those. I want the silver straight. There we go. Okay. So those are ready to solder onto the earrings or onto the sp spoons, things. Yeah, good to go, ready to solder. I use Handy Flux and how I use the Handy Flux is kind of different. Uh, my Handy Flux, I let dry out And then I take small little bits of it and I dump it in the piece like that, like so. And then I apply heat to it. You want to walk your heat heating device around the piece so that way it gets evenly the heat is spread evenly get that off of there and then what I normally do is I have this little pick that I got from Harbor Freight and I put a tiny little dab of solder on the end of that. Nice. My torch keeps going out. There we go. Um, yeah, that'll do. Put a tiny little bit of solder and I set this on the bottom of the piece, not along the wall of the piece, so let's see, I don't know if I can get you guys in there to see exactly what I'm doing, but we'll see if you can see it. Okay. The heat goes on. I set this down, and I set it down on the base. So that the solder flows onto the spoon first, and then it flows onto my If I need to, I can always press this thing down a little on one side because it seems like Some of that lifted. I'm gonna get another little piece of solder and put it on this side. And again, I made sure that the solder went onto the base first. Now, some people cut just little pieces of solder and then throw it in, that's fine. You can do that. The only reason why I do it this way that I put a little solder on the tip of this guy 
is that I've learned that when I heat, when I throw in a little chunk of solder in there, it normally attaches to the wall of the bezel wire of the bezel and not onto the, the base. And then I'm stuck with a bunch of solder on my bezel wire and none of it gets onto the base and then it takes for forever to try to get it onto the, the bezel wire. So this is why I do it this way. So that solder actually makes it onto the base of the piece and not just onto the bezel wire. So there is a method to my madness. So these pieces are done. So time to decorate these two pieces. So I found I had already made a handful of these little sun stamps and I will show on this video how to make one of these. Um, but I have two of these already made, these larger sun stamps. So I'm going to put one on the top of each piece like that. I'm going to get rid of this ball. Now I do have some more sun stamps, these little guys. And because this is, these will be earrings, I don't want them to weigh too much. So I'm not going to decorate them with the just a ton of half round nuggets um, because that the weight from those will actually become um, well it won't become too much but I just don't want it too heavy every little piece that we add to this makes it just heavier and heavier so because they are earrings just want to make sure that they're light that they're not dragging people's earlobes to their knees when they don't need to so I like the idea, I've got a ton of these little suns made. I like the idea of putting the little suns all the way around each piece. And I hope I have enough suns made. If I don't, I will definitely show you in this video how to make some of these sun stamps. Um, ooh, yeah, that one goes right on the corner. I don't like that. So maybe if we can set them out, see those two go right on the corner and then we can mix beads in between, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, let's see what size. So I've got here off to this side, just a small small little bucket of half rounds. These are pre-made little half rounds that I've done melted um, from sterling. And that's too big of a too big of a piece. Let's find some pieces that will fit. Wonderfully in between the suns. I need to make some more medium to small sized um, balls, silver balls, because I am starting to run out of those. But that looks good. That looks good. This one might need to be a little bit bigger that separates these two. Here's a smaller one. Hmm. Let me put a larger one here on the bottom. One there, one there. Sorry, I don't mean to be like... This is what it looks like so far. And then we need a... Smaller to medium half round. 
up here in this corner, and I think that's a little too small. I think this one's a little too large. So we're gonna take those. Let's try to find two that match. I'm sorry, I know you all can't see the box of half round nuggets that I'm searching through. Sometimes it can be really tedious trying to find just the right um, mix of pieces to decorate. So there we go. That might work and that one might work. Let's get these in there. Yay! Because we want that sun on the top to be centered. So I think, hmm, what do you think? I kind of like that design. I don't think I've done a design like that. Usually if I use the um, suns, they will be um, all kind of smashed together, but I really do like that design. So I think we're going to go with that design right there. Let's see if we can repeat it on this side. And again, here are my half round, half round nuggets. And let's put a sun here. This one works. So that's the design that I have decided to go with. I just got this new piece on here and what I like to do is I take each piece and turn it over as, as it's supposed to lay and those are not the right pliers to do this with. So each sun gets flipped over, each little half round gets flipped over now i have seen a few people solder stuff um and what they've done is they put solder all the way around the outside of the piece so that they can then put their pieces down and it solders directly onto the piece that's great however i have found that sometimes pieces don't stick and so when i go to put them in the pickle they come off um, and they were just held on because of the flux or held on due to whatever reason, who knows how they were held on, um, but they stuck. So instead of adding to frustration, what I do is I put a little piece of solder on each little sun, half round, and for the half rounds on each little sun, I put a little piece of solder. So we are going to heat this up. Come on, let go. Let go of my pliers. I love when I talk to the solder and tell it to let go of my pliers so that it will just sit nicely in its little, little placement. Just behave behave solder behave okay so a little bit of solder in each sun the balls the half rounds i will do differently so those i wind up sticking solder on this so this is a um pick that i got at harbor freight and solder for whatever reason sticks to the end of this pick and so each little half round ball, I'll run around and dab solder on that. But for now, we are going to get the little pieces of solder that we put on the suns to melt.
and I'll put a little hair of flux on each little sun as well. That wasn't enough flux on that one. Okay, so now for the little half run balls because all the suns have their solder soldered into them. So for each little half round, oop, I got my flame going just a little too hot. So for each little half round, just gonna heat it up. twist there's a little bit of flux and a little bit of solder on this pick that I've got that I'm using and I need a little more solder so all I'm doing is I've got, I don't know if it will focus on that, so I've got a little layer of solder on that pick. I put a little bit of flux, I heat the half round, and then I just twist and there she goes. We get a little bit of flux on each and solder on each little half round. Now the half rounds, the reason why I do this again is because I have put solder, like I said, on the piece, like I've seen some people do. Um, I'm just making sure these little half rounds have solder on them. Okay. Um, and then for whatever reason, it's fallen off of the piece. And I want to heat this piece, so remember, I have not pickled these, so I don't want any issues with um, the flux kind of bubbling up. ahead and get all of the pieces back on. And as close as possible to where they're supposed to go. Because some of them will have to kind of like walk into place. That larger one goes there. That goes like that. The smaller one goes here, this one goes here, it is kind of hard to tell with the half rounds, um, because I don't know about you, but my eyesight's not the greatest, it is hard to tell if they're on their, their right side right side up
Okay. That is pretty dang close. So, we are now going to heat this. I'm on zoom in. Zoom in. And I hope you can see the flux running. I don't know if you're going to be able to, but... Flux is starting to run, or the solder, sorry, not the flux. Now the flux is on the inside of these pieces, so we don't really need flux for everything to stick. Now these ones... sure that that sun's down. Okay. I'm gonna walk away over here. Bring this sun in just a little bit. Bring that sun in. Okay, I think as a check, I always check and kind of like pull on the pieces with the, with my pliers to make sure that they're all soldered and set. And it looks like everything is soldered and set, so. I quickly dumped this in water and it looks like everything is set well and in its right place. So I will cut around this and we will put these in pickle. Okay, I did figure out how I'm going to get my earring hoop in. And instead of doing a little hoop at the end, I decided to add these little round of balls and I'm gonna heat this and put just a dab of solder on each side to get it to stick. So I'm going to heat the piece first, and actually I'm going to get my solder on my little stick first. I want is just a dab of solder. I don't want too much solder. So I'm being very careful about how much solder I get on the tip of my stick. I get heat evenly all the way around. So I got some solder on this side. I need to move it because I need to get solder on that other side. Should do it. Okay. That will allow me to get the 
little earring loop to go through here. And I'm going to cool this off so I can show you. So we're going to take the little earring loop and go right through there. So off to the pickle to clean these up. Okay, this is out of the out of the pickle, so they're clean. And I'm a little too lazy to um, hand saw out all the stuff, so I just trim these with a, a trimming wheel. See what that looks like. Ah, uh, where's the toothbrush? Okay, toothbrush it off. Get all the crap off my hand. That looks good to me. Now I hate, hate with a passion these um, flush mount deals. So I'm gonna make my own serrations. And they're just going to be wavy. And if you do this, if you make your own serrations, Try to get the corners out as well. So um, I've done this in the past where I've done my own serrations and made my own wavies on them and they look really good. I love it like that. Um, but if you don't get the corners uh, trimmed down, the corners are hard to set. Hence the reason, again, why I use a fish tank. We are outside of the fish tank because it's easier to focus on um, the piece and work on it. But right now I kind of like the way that that looks. So the next step for me is to use um, silver black which blackens the areas of the silver for us so that the suns will pop. Um, so we will head over and use silver black. So silver, silver black is kind of like liver sulfur, except it goes directly onto the piece um, and turns it black right away like a this. And you want to make sure you get into every little crevice. Okay. 
and we will let that sit and then buff it off. So that is what the silver black does. It's kind of like magic. So we'll let that sit and buff it off. Okay, I'm gonna set the stone in this piece and I'm using just some napkin to set the stone up a little bit higher than what it would naturally set. In the napkin, there is, you can get, um, oh, I think it's like um, sawdust that you can use to set the stones a little bit higher up. I just use a napkin and I just press it around. And the reason a napkin, for one, it's easy to get a hold of, and for two, napkins kind of condense in place. So you can press it around and set it in place, and it will lower based on what you need it to lower. If that makes sense, you can press it. And so napkins condense. You can also, if you need to, put a little bit of um, super glue on a napkin. So I don't want the stone any higher than that. And what I want to do is to press my bezel wire around my stone. And I'm just using the side of these pairs of pliers. How cool does that look with it being all varied shapes, right? Like that to me looks very nice. So I will use a little buffing round to buff off the silver black and to shine up the silver. And I'm going to use Zam. Zam is the buffing compound that I use on pretty much everything. Zam also uh, helps shine and polish turquoise, so it's not going to harm the turquoise if it's hit with the Zam. So, I will prepare the other one just like we prepared this one, um, and we will then go wash these. So I get the buffing compound off with just soap and water. So soap and water gets the buffing compound off in warm water, hot water. So we will buff these or go wash these off, um, and I will prepare the other one, and we will see what they look like together. Okay, we've got these pieces done. Here is the label, and I put the um, silver black inside of this, so when it buffs out, this is how they turned out. I think those look gorgeous, and we're gonna make some earring hoops for these. And I believe standard earrings are I believe they're 20, 20 gauge. I could be wrong. You might want to look that up. But 20 gauge, I think, is a standard earring hoop. So that's one. And we want to bend it out a little bit better. So that is one. So how I did this was I take my 20 gauge. And this is um, not dead soft. This is pretty hard. So if you have a chance, you get the hard 
I just spin it around once in here. I want to make sure that my hoops are the same. This one's a little bit bigger, so I'm actually going to cut this and just start again. So I'm going to make another round. And I'm pretty sure, again, yeah, those are pretty, pretty good. And then once it's around like that, I'm going to take it and crimp it and bend it that way so that it is straight, like so. Then I will take this earring, match it up to where my hoop was, and make a hoop on that side, or a curve in the middle. And then I'll just cut it right about there, and we have our two earring, earring pieces. Now, because these have to fit over this, um, we want to make sure that these hoops are big enough. Oops. And they are. Look at that. So that is earring number one. Done. Earring number two. Let's make sure this fits. And done. Oh, the hoop needs to go over just a little bit. Woohoo! Okay, we're done. All right, so those are the earrings that we made. And you can always add like little beads to these little hoops at the end. I think I might add a little bead if I can find one. Um, but yeah. Those are them. Let's get a better better shot of that. That's the earrings that we made. These are them. And weight-wise, they're not too chunky. They are a little heavy because it's just a larger stone with a little bit more work to them, but that's okay.